run back retry. The Polaris Dawn crew will consist of Jared Isaacman, Scott Kid Potit, who is a veteran member of Jared's team, and two SpaceX employees, Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon. This will be a truly incredible series of missions, and we could not be more excited for our fellow SpaceXers going to space. To learn more about the Polaris program and the Polaris Dawn mission, head over to their website at polarisprogram.com. Now the next mi major milestone you're about to see on your screen involves the transporter erector, which is the trusted structure trusted structure next to Falcon 9, and if you look closely below the fairing, you can see the clamp arms opening up. That's in preparation uh, to clear the way for the TE to start to and retract. retract progress. And there's that call out that the strong back or, or the trusted, the TE is retracting away from the vehicle. Then at T0, it will clear the way even more um, as the vehicle lifts off. Now, TE is a structure that provides liquids, gases, and electrical connections to the second stage, as well as air conditioning to the payload fairing. And at this point, the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. And you can see some white clouds on your screen. That is the chilled gas inside of the vehicle above the LOX tank liquid surface that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. And when that gas exits the vehicle into the warmer Florida air, the humid air condenses into clouds. Similar. Stage one lock flow complete. Pretty similar to when you have a cold glass of water and condensation forms around it. And we also just heard the call out for the first stage lock loading complete. Next up will be second stage at about T minus two minutes. At T minus a minute and a half, we then vent the pressure out of the LOX line on the transporter erector. So again, that excess chilled gas gets ejected out into the Florida air. So you will see more of, that, of those white clouds forming around that time. We aim to finish prop loading on the Take first stage. Take two throttle back. We aim to finish prop loading on the first stage by T minus three minutes and second stage at T minus two minutes to minimize how long the liquid oxygen could start to warm up. Then at a minute before liftoff, you'll hear that Falcon 9 is in startup. That means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside T minus two seconds, the Merlin 1D engines will light up and then we're set for T zero. Waiting for that call out for LOX load on second stage. Stage two LOX load complete. There it is. Now both first and second stage are fully loaded with propellant. The Starlink payload continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the vehicle. Weather is still looking amazing and you can see the blue skies there on your screen. And the range is green for launch. Now, as I mentioned, you can see the white clouds coming from the transporter erector again. That is the liquid oxygen that we are venting out, clearing those lines on the transporter erector. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that call out that the Falcon 9's computers have taken over the launch countdown, just waiting for the final go from the launch director. LD, go for launch. And all systems are now go for launch. So let's listen into the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 46 Starlink satellites to space. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engines full power. Lift off. Starlink 48.
vehicles which are down range. M1B chamber pressure is nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Power telemetry nominal. Carrying our stack of 46 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. And moments ago, we throttled down the engines, reducing the speed by decreasing the flow of fuel to the engine. That's in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic Vehicle pressure. Vehicle supersonic. And we are coming up on max Q in a few seconds here. Max Q. And there's that call out that we've passed through Max Q. Now we do have four events coming up in quick succession. The first will be main engine cutoff or MECO, stage separation, second engine start one or SES one, and then fairing deploy. So main engine cutoff is where all nine of the M1D engines shut down to slow the vehicle uh, down in preparation for the next event, which is stage separation. And that is where the first stage separates from the second stage. Right after stage separation, the first stage will, make, will start making its way back to Earth for landing. And while we are able to land the first stage, back, while we are able to land the first stage, both on land and at sea on our drone ship, today we will attempt to recover the first stage uh, on today's mission on our drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas. And while this is happening, stage two will continue on its journey with the third event, which is SES-1, or second stage engine start one. That's where the MVEC engine lights up and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. And just a few seconds after that, we'll have fairing deploy. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. Bearing separation confirmed. And great views on your screen. We just saw Miko stage separation, SES-1 and fairing deploy. On your left-hand screen is the first stage, right-hand screen is a view of the NVAC engine. And those visual confirmations mean that we have successfully uh, deployed our fairing halves. SpaceX has reflown Falcon fairing halves since 2019. And the fairing halves flying on today's mission are flying for the third time. Improvements on the fairing and our overall refurbishment process has decreased the impact of water landings and led to an overall fairing recovery rate of 93% over the last 14 missions. Of 109 fairing missions, 73 have been recovered and 32 missions have flown recovered fairing halves. And again, we will be attempting to recover the halves again today using our recovery vessel, Doug. Some great views here as stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit. Stage one will complete two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of those nine M1D engines will reignite. And that helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters back into the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. Then the second burn for the first stage is the landing burn. This is a single engine burn, the center E9 engine, and that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. Stage two is still looking good on a nominal trajectory. On your left hand screen, you can see those grid fins on the first stage, helping to guide the vehicle back to its landing zone. Now, if you're just now joining us, we've had a successful liftoff of Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Slick 40 today. Right now, you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9's second stage on the right-hand screen. And that was just a call out for a nominal trajectory on second stage. 
Stage one is currently making its way back to our drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas. And today is the 38th launch of Starlink satellites overall, the seventh mission of 2022, fourth Starlink mission of 2022, and the 145th total overall SpaceX launch. We're just about a minute away from the entry burn start on the first stage. The Merlin engines on the first stage are optimized for sea level. These achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent. That's when we lift off or fly um, towards space and descent, and that's when we come back down to Earth. Now, the MVAC engine is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum, and that's what you're seeing on your right-hand screen. You can see those grid fins on your left-hand screen on the first stage. Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage. And the stage one is using nothing but the grid fins for steering as it makes its way, uh, as it makes its return back to Earth. Um, that is until we light the center E9 engine. Then we can gimbal the engine to help guide the stage as it lands. Again, we're coming up on that entry burn here in a few seconds. Stage one FTS has saved. Stage one entry burn startup. We heard the call out, and you can visually see that stage the stage two FTS has saved. You can visually see that the entry burn has begun on the first stage. Stage two continues to follow nominal trajectory. Great call outs on stage two. Entry burn. Stage one entry burn shut down. There it is. It's just a 20 second burn, and as you can see and heard. Uh, the entry burn has concluded. Next up will be the landing burn, and that'll be the final burn for the first stage as it returns back to Earth. Now, for those of you who follow along, you'll know that the soot on the rocket indicates it's been flown before. The rocket-grade rocket grade kerosene, RP-1, uh, used to fuel a Falcon 9 is carbon-based, so when it burns, it generates that soot. And as you just saw with the entry burn, the Falcon 9 vehicle uh, flies through its plume, and that's how it generates the sit onto the vehicle. We are just about 20 seconds or so away from that landing burn beginning on the first stage, and as we touch down, we will also have SECA 1, or second stage engine cutoff 1, on second stage. So we should... Uh, Hear some calls for that as we are landing on a shortfall of Gravitas today. Stage one, landing burn. Stage one, leg deploy. Stage one, landing confirmed. Pico one. And great news. We heard that Falcon 9 has landed, touched down on a shortfall of Gravitas. We also heard, there it is on your screen. Incredible view of the vehicle standing Not tall. Insertion. And we also had Seco one as well as that call out right there. Let us know that we had a good orbit. Great news overall. We are now awaiting the deployment of our 46 Starlink satellites, which is scheduled to occur about an hour from now. Now, as I mentioned before, we won't have live audio or visual confirmation of payload deployment due to lack of ground station coverage. We will regain signal with our ground station at T plus one hour and 19 minutes. So for those of you who are interested, we will keep the audio only countdown nets up on our YouTube channel and we'll confirm successful payload deployment on our social channels. So that will bring our webcast to a close today. Also signal Cape and Bermuda. 
Our team at SpaceX would like to send a big thank you to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting our mission. Of course, thank you to all of you, our viewers, and all of our Starlink customers using our service at this time. And if you're interested in signing up for Starlink service, head over to Starlink.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again soon.